Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the 6 a.m. press conference here on the CZU Lightning Complex. I'm Jonathan Cox, Deputy Chief for Cal Fire, San Mateo Santa Cruz Unit, uh, and the line officer here out on the incident. Uh, just a few things as usual. If uh, you can please mute your telephones, take any conversations uh, outside the press briefing area, um, as well as keep your masks on uh, as much as, as possible. There will be a qu uh, time at the end of this press conference for questions and answers with the representatives that are up here. Just a few things, a uh, quick update on the fire. The fire grew, it's uh, 78,000 acres uh, as of six o'clock this morning. Uh, it is now 13% contained. So uh, we in, uh, continue to make uh, good strides to increase that containment. However, there still are th uh, 24,300 structures that are threatened around the fire area. Uh, and we can now confirm that 231 structures have been destroyed uh, both uh, throughout Santa Cruz and San Mateo counties. And we have a more specific breakdown of that that we can get you later this morning. Uh, we continue to increase the number of firefighters uh, that, that are arriving every day. Uh, we're up to 1,511 firefighters, uh, federal, state, local government, uh, including um, uh, ones from out of state here on this incident. Uh, one thing to note is there was an evacuation warning that went out in Santa Clara County yesterday uh, afternoon. That warning went out in uh, an abundance of caution uh, based on the potential uh, lightning and storms that, that were forecasted for yesterday. We do not believe there's any imminent threat over to the Santa Clara County side right now. I just wanted to help clarify that because obviously uh, that's a whole new county uh, 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 right by us. With that, I think uh, it's time for an operations update from uh, CAL FIRE Incident Management Team Operations Section Chief Mark Brum. Good morning. So the past 24 hours, albeit we are in a red flag warning, uh, we've actually had the opportunity the weather hasn't been as uh, significant as we were expecting, uh, which is good. And that has given us an opportunity for our crews to make a lot of great progress throughout this fire. So starting in our north zone part of the fire, again, uh, a lot of it, a lot of good work up there. You see this uh, Xing on the line, and that's a control line that's been established and, uh, and verified. So. We have a really good uh, set of control lines being uh, on the north end of the fire uh, throughout the entire north. And, and then down on the coast, uh, some of the fires, it's actually self-mitigated in the fact that uh, it's, it's burning some lighter fuels. And with the increase in the humidities and so forth, the fires actually um, extinguish itself. So that's very good. Um, around Davenport, haven't seen any movement of the fire. It is still hung up on the, the ridge top. Uh, it's something that once we get more resources, we'll, we're going to go directly after. But we do have a good control line around that community and protecting that community as well. On the south end of the fire, uh, we have con uh, continued to improve the control lines along the south end. We have this really good control line that r runs from Highway 1 to Highway 9. We have a secondary that we put in. Uh, we did a little burnout operation in, in that uh, southern part of the Bonnie Dune area. And uh, that widened and improved our line uh, tremendously. So it created a very good control line to the south, uh, a primary, and then a secondary. So that really, really puts an excellent protection, protection for uh, Santa Cruz and the UC campus. I won't say that they're completely 100% out of uh, any sort of danger, but we are very confident that these lines are going to hold and, and do what we need them to do. Uh, moving up the fire uh, in the Felton area, fire still uh, well up on the ridge. Felton is still looking pretty good. Again, uh, we, we proceed with caution with the uh, weather event as uh, we continue through that until that is completed with the red flag warning. Uh, the I Highway 9 corridor, uh, the thing about that, we, we've been able to, to establish some lines and are continuing to establish some lines. Are they as um, robust as we'd like them to be? No, absolutely not. They're primary. They were uh, established very rapidly to try to keep the fire in check. Uh, we're just kind of doing uh, you know, a bump and run type technique and a technique in which we just try to push or hurt the fire, like I've said before. So with that, it's not the kind of line that we would traditionally put in where it's very robust, solid, and is going to hold fire, and then we can follow up with other uh, suppression tactics. So therefore, with that, and, and due to the topography, very steep, extremely rugged terrain, lots of ravines and canyons and, and that sort of thing, drainages, very difficult for us to work in. It's not how we traditionally uh, establish our lines, not where we like to put our lines. They give us the best advantage, but we do with what we're dealt, and uh, we'll, we're giving it our best shot based on that. So we'll work with what we're, we put in uh, the best we can. As a result of that, what we're going to see, and you will see, we'll have little setbacks here and there. There's nothing that's pushing or threatening directly to the community, uh, but people may see, now that the air is cleared a little bit more, 
uh, some flames and so forth. That's going to be normal. You're going to see that because we have not fully extinguished this fire. We're far from that at this point. Again, heavy fuels, these, this rugged terrain, to put those lines in, to, to hold them and establish them is going to take time. So there has to be a bit of patience. But any flare-ups that we do get, we move our resources back there, we fall back as we can, take care of these things where the, where the hot material may roll out down onto the steep terrain, burn back up into the, the burn itself. That's going to happen, or you're going to see that. Um, but it's something that we can easily jump upon and, and we can start mitigating and uh, keep it from getting further down uh, onto the Highway 9 corridor. There are a few points where it's come down and touched the Highway 9 corridor in areas without structures. That's fine. Highway 9 is a good uh, good place to kind of stop that, and, and, we've, and that part of the fire is extinguished. So now that brings a nice solid uh, control line, if you will, right there along Highway 9 as well. So we're going to continue that. That, that process is going to be painstakingly long. It's, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of effort, take a lot of work to do it, to establish a very solid control line. But we're working uh, diligently to do that. Bonnie Dune area, again, very difficult because of the number of structures that are uh, dispersed throughout that, that area. A lot of vegetation again, a lot of very steep and rugged terrain in various parts of that. So a painstaking process, uh, it's a slow process, but we are continually working on that. Our crews are making advancements every day uh, to making that more safe and getting the community back on its feet. Uh, speaking next from the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office is Chief Deputy Clark. Good morning. So in terms of Sheriff's Office activity, uh, last night, we uh, again, burglary suppression was our priority with welfare checks uh, uh, and checking on different folks as those calls came in. Uh, in terms of total calls for service, uh, how many calls did we get? Uh, Ten suspicious v uh, people uh, were called in, as well as two welfare checks, and, and we uh, sent deputies out on both of those. Uh, our missing persons, we, that count stands at four. We still had four missing people uh, that we're trying to determine where they are. In terms of our activity, when it comes to the miss or, sorry, when it comes to the suspicious, peop uh, suspicious people, we did make three arrests last night, as I've said before, and I'll continue to say that our, we, you know, we have a lot of personnel. And last night we had a lot of personnel. Today, moving forward, we're going to have 79 total personnel, 33 from our office, and again, I can't speak more highly of, uh, of our, uh, of our uh, local agencies and agencies over the hill uh, that contributed 46 to that total today, so 79 total personnel that will be out looking for people that should not be in the evacuation area or looking to prey on other people who've already evacuated. So kind of in that vein, last night there were, there were uh, three people, or four people rather, uh, three in which we arrested, two people arrested, uh, contacted, they had warrants, they were, they were taken to jail, arrested for those warrants, and then also charged with being in a closed evacuation area, as well as, uh, as, well as a lady that was seen walking around with a backpack, she was from San Francisco, uh, not from the area, and uh, was arrested for uh, being in a closed evacuation area. And then we also cited a person last night um, who is from the area but wasn't supposed to be here, and he was, uh, he was escorted out. And then... I wanted to touch real quickly, so uh, we've gotten a number of calls with regards to the City of Santa Cruz. And so the City of Santa Cruz uh, did a, a kind of like a pre-warning. Uh, I believe they went door to door. Uh, great thing to be prepared, uh, but there's no, I wanted to reiterate, there's no imminent fire da uh, danger uh, right now to the City of Santa Cruz. And so, um, uh, you know, CAL FIRE's done uh, a great job of kind of securing that southern border. As long as the weather stays the way that it should and, and the conditions stay the way it should, there should not be uh, an imminent danger, or the, at least there's not right now, to the city of Santa Cruz. And then lastly, there's been a lot of interest in uh, the wallet that was stolen from the, uh, from the firefighter. And, and uh, again, I, I, I think we're all kind of blown away that somebody would actually, you know, uh, you know steal from someone that's out there trying to help. Uh, but we have a detective and are de uh, dedicated to that case, so we're looking into it. Uh, we're running down leads, and uh, I, I guarantee if we can find out who did this, that person's going to jail. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's an update on, on our activity. Thank you. And speaking next from the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office is Saul Zuno. Good morning. No, right now, no sig uh, significant changes for San Mateo County. Uh, however, we did have an incident yesterday where uh, six people did enter a restricted area to check on their property, and uh, the end result is uh, they had to be rescued. Um, they snuck into an area that was restricted. 
uh, they were surprised by the fire and uh, we had to uh, redirect resources to get these people out. Um, we, we understand that when people are evacuated, they're very anxious, they're concerned for the properties, and that's why we have uh, law enforcement protecting those areas and keeping them secure 24-7. Uh, please help us. If, you, if, you're, uh, if there's a restricted area, do not enter it, because then what happens is we have to redirect resources uh, those, you put those responders in additional risk and you put yourself in a risk for injury. Um, so other than that, uh, you know, we're working very hard around the clock to make sure that you guys are giving the information up to date, anything significant that you know about it. And we're putting information out on all our social media channels. And for San Mateo County, if you want uh, more information, you can download our app for either Android or iPhone at SanMateoCountySheriffs.com. Thank you. Uh, and speaking next, one of the Unified Incident Commanders, CAL FIRE Incident Management Team uh, 3, Incident Commander Billy C. Uh, good morning. Obviously, uh, over the last 48 hours, we've had uh, a lot of success, a lot of small wins, and they're starting to add up to uh, larger wins um, on this incident. We continue to uh, increase our personnel numbers assigned to this incident, as well as engines and crews and we will continue to do that until we have sufficient resources at the incident to uh, mitigate the, the entire perimeter. Obviously, uh, Mother Nature has helped us quite a bit. We had moisture uh, yesterday evening. We've had increased humidities with reduced winds. Um, my operational folks on the ground have taken advantage of those opportunities that Mother Nature has presented us and have uh, worked extremely hard to develop what we have currently and we will continue to progress as long as the conditions remain the same or improve. Obviously, we're still vigilant to what occurred over the last seven days and what type of weather pattern we're in, what kind of, what, what kind of winds we had, what kind of drop in humidities we had. And we'll be watching that closely and we'll be prepared to uh, be proactive if those conditions resurface uh, during the next week to two weeks so we can be aggressive with maintaining our perimeter and reduce the risk both to all the communities that are endangered and all the infrastructure that is out there. Thank you. Uh, and our final speaker, Cal Fire San Mateo Santa Cruz Unit Chief Lorcan. Good morning. Um, it's nice to see we've got a little bit of weather uh, 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 being an advantage, uh, helping us take advantage of uh, those opportunities where we can get people into the fire now and uh, start to actually get some action that is positive uh, as you see the increase with the uh, containment is there. Um, I want to just uh, focus a little bit on uh, what uh, Sergeant Zuno said. Um, we have people that are still trying to get in to see if their properties are there. Um, both San Mateo County and Santa Cruz County are working diligently. Um, they're establishing websites that will be able to provide the uh, public information on the status of their residents. Um, we currently have numerous teams of uh, inspectors out there looking at each of the properties, uh, gathering information so that we can get that out to the public as soon as possible through both the counties so that you can have an idea of what's, what, what you have left or if uh, your property was undamaged. So uh, please be uh, patient with us as we get this uh, information out to you. Um, we need to make it sure that it's safe for our inspectors to get into the areas so that they can assess the damage that occurred. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the formal speakers. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any lightning strikes over the overnight hours, Jonathan, that caused problems? Yeah, I do know that there were some uh, down strikes uh, across the northern part of the state. I don't believe it was widespread, uh, and we didn't have any confirmed in our local area in the San Mateo Santa Cruz unit. Can you talk about the six people who had to be rescued after trying to check on the property? Yeah, I, I don't know the specifics of it. I don't know if the, the Saul does. Unfortunately, I don't have much specifics other than they, they entered a restricted area. I, on the positive note, I can tell you that they weren't injured, nor were the first responders that got them out. I don't have details right now if they were cited for anything, uh, but this is, you know, if anything, it's mostly a reminder to everybody that, to work with us on this. You know, there are a lot of folks who feel like, you know, especially in the beginning, they were frustrated that they didn't see more firefighters near their particular property. Of course, firefighters were busy everywhere, but 
What do you want to say to the community who's trying to get back in? That, just like the chief said, once it is safe to do so and the fire investigators have had a chance to go in there and ream that area, uh, re, uh, declare that area safe to do so, until then, don't. Because there, there could be a lot of other things going on that people are not aware of. And we understand that they, you know, that's why I mentioned that anything that's important, we're, information wise, we're working to get it out there. Um, things are changing, but, you know, constant every day. So just please work with us. Be patient. We understand how you guys feel, but that's why the uh, we have law enforcement out there working together 24-7. Can you talk any more about the gentleman who was found in Davenport? Sure. As I mentioned, uh, is the question was uh, about uh, the person who was found deceased up on last chance. So there's, there's no new information. I don't have any new information as far as that's concerned. Uh, I mentioned last night that we're uh, working right now to notify um, that person's next to Ken. And so as soon as we've done that and we've, uh, we've been able to speak with his family, uh, we'll be able to provide more information. Was he in his home? No, he wasn't. Uh, and I, I, as I mentioned last night, at least preliminarily, it looks like he was uh, maybe near, a near his vehicle um, and, and some distance away from his vehicle, likely leaving the fire. You guys having enough Jonathan, enough resources? I know it's a fight for that high. You guys having enough right now, or would you like more? Yeah, so I think the question was related to resources coming into the fire. Uh, if you've looked every day, we've increased the number of resources, uh, and that's exactly what we need at the moment. Uh, there are over 14,000 firefighters deployed right now across California, uh, another 26 engines coming from other states, another 216 National Guard crews, come, or, uh, uh, firefighters coming online in the next few days. Uh, so those, you know, th those, those steps are just um, uh, uh, kind of... Uh, vital for us to increase that containment. Just remember, any time this team increases that containment number, that's equivalent to hundreds and hundreds of hours of hard work out on the line. That's what those numbers reflect, essentially. Um, so as we see those, so those firefighting crew numbers come in, as we see the weather become favorable, uh, the correlation of those two together are, are increasing the percentage. And I will just go back uh, to kind of dovetail on what um, you know, Sergeant Zuno said. Uh, in regard to people going back into the areas trying to check on their structures. It is highly dangerous in there still. There are trees coming down. We have redwood trees, old growth timber that is coming across the roadway. Uh, and we have infrastructure that needs repair. We have bridges that have failed, old wooden bridges that have failed that may not appear uh, failed to people that they may drive on. It is not safe. The fire may not be directly impacting their structure or property, but there are huge hazards out there. And the last thing we want to do as first responders is allow somebody to get hurt or injured out there after the fire has gone through. So just need to reiterate that there is going to need to be a lot of patience as we uh, 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 kind of work to secure these areas and get people the inform information they need. Understand we ourselves uh, uh, know this is personal for us. We have firefighters who have lost homes. Um, and we know how personal it is, and we, uh, we're working 24 hours a day to get that area secured for them, but it is going to take some time. To follow up on resources, can you confirm that the entire perimeter has, um, is being watched at least, that there's at least eyes? So the way the fires work is uh, um, Chief Brunton and his team uh, divide the fire into geographical areas, branches and divisions, and then there's um, objectives and tasks within those. So there is a, a supervisor as well as resources assigned for every geographical area on the fire. Now obviously they move around where, where necessary for their operational period, uh, but that's one of the, the big priorities and tasks that these, this team comes in and does at a very large scale, um, and that's their expertise, so yes. Hey Jonathan, has there been any help for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District yet? Have they been able to get in there or do you anticipate when they might be able to get in there? Yeah, so the question is related to San Lorenzo Water District. What we can tell you is there is an, a whole infrastructure branch established as a part of the incident uh, management team now. And that team works directly with the water districts, with the power companies, uh, with the sewer districts to make sure that they're coordinating with fire. Uh, there's also the support from the County Emergency Operations Center, the EOC, uh, to make sure that they're getting the information and connections with the fire, uh, because that is the next step after the, after the fire, is in securing the water systems, ensuring the infrastructure is in place, uh, and that happens sequentially, and those conversations and those operations have already begun. So yes, there is uh, integration going on with the, the water companies. Any idea when they might be able to get up there to make the temporary repairs? Yeah, I'd have to get back to you on that one. Uh, it, I, I don't want to speak for them.
Okay, thanks guys. Uh, everyone up here is available for comments. Uh, we will do this again at 6 p.m. Be safe. Thank you.